Hi, everyone. I'm just going to give people a few moments to join the call, but welcome. We're so glad to have you. We've got lots of people joining still. I'm gonna give it just a couple more minutes for everybody to get into the Zoom room, but uh, we're so glad you're here. And congratulations to any admitted students on the call. All right, it's looking good. It's looking like our um, participant numbers may be beginning to plateau. So um, I just want to say thank you to everyone for joining the call this evening. We are really excited to have you here. Um, I'm just going to start out by um, giving a quick introduction, and then I will hand it over to my colleague Jason Elliott in the sustainability department. And he's going to tell you all about um, sustainability at Duke this evening. So just to start off, um, I just want to say welcome to Duke. Uh, Duke encourages persons with disabilities to participate in its programs and activities. Um, if you would like to request accommodation services for an information session, please contact Idella Hackett at idella.hackett at duke.edu or please call 919-684-0186 to arrange these accommodations for a later date. Additionally, this session is being recorded and will be available on our YouTube channel shortly. So uh, that is all that I had to share. I'm excited for today's program um, partnering with the sustainability office at Duke. So I am going to stop screen sharing and hand it over to my colleague, Jason Elliott. Um, please do feel free to use the chat or Q&A function. Um, we do have um, some admissions officers working in the background to answer your questions. Great. Thank you so much, Bethany. Hi, everybody. And like Bethany said, congratulations if you are an incoming student. So excited to be able to welcome you to fall um, campus in the fall. So my name is Jason Elliott. I'm the Assistant Director of Sustainable Duke. And today we're gonna to be talking about climate change and sustainability efforts at Duke. Um, I'm gonna start screen sharing. And like Bethany said, feel free to add questions to the chat. I probably won't look at them during my actual presentation. So um, I will probably just find a time right at the very end. But without further ado, sustainability at Duke is multifaceted and it's not just our office of sustainable duke we're so fortunate to have folks from across campus really helping us live into our commitments as well as our uh, various goals and strategies across campus and so some of these other departments are our facilities group who helps us with how the entire campus runs and operates from an operational perspective parking and transportation dining and procurement and many many other departments we also have various student government like groups such as Duke Student Government for undergrads, but as well as the graduate student and professional government um, who is graduate students, like it sounds. And then there's over a dozen, probably closer to 20 student organizations that focus on climate and sustainability efforts. So if that is your passion, you will find your pathway here at Duke. We also have a campus sustainability committee, which is made up of student staff and faculty who really put together the strategies for how Duke can be doing better in other areas. And so that group right now we're focusing on sustainable purchasing next year we'll be focusing on waste. Um, so if you're ever a student who's in some of these organizations as leaders, you might become a member of our campus sustainability committee one day. And lastly, we have a climate action committee and I will go over this in more detail, but they're the group who is helping with the more recently launched climate commitment at Duke University. To give you a little bit of a sense of the types of things that we do, at least in my office, we are kind of the 
the planners, the strategists for the university, trying to identify ways that we can really think through various ways to make campus more sustainable, whether it's the energy that we use on campus, whether it's transportation for our employees, as well as when we're traveling for business, carbon offsets to help us really think about meeting the remaining emissions that we might have when our carbon neutrality goal hits literally a year from now. Very exciting times at Duke. Uh, education, so the way that we train and educate our students to become um, advocates and literate in these concepts so they can take it wherever they go in the future, as well as how we communicate and engage with the student staff and faculty at Duke University. In addition to those topic areas, we also want to focus on things that are maybe not just focused on greenhouse gas emissions. So that's where you're also going to start finding us in our water use on campus, waste, natural resources. One of the wonderful things about Duke is that we are a university in the forest, quite literally. There's a forest that is just out uh, on the outskirts of campus that's 7,000 acres, and it's a really, really wonderful place to be. We also want to think about sustainable food. Where are we getting it from? And how are we making sure that our students are um, eating healthily and making sure that they are also finding the things that they really want from our food menus? And lastly, pur purchasing or procurement, like I mentioned before, is one of our focus areas this year. The other thing that the climate commitment, which launched last fall, is really trying to take into account all the things that we do at Duke University, including um, climate education and literacy, climate research, meaning the research that our faculty are doing every day to try to figure out solutions to climate change, sustainable operations and facilities like energy use, water use, uh, renewable energy on campus, et cetera. Um, I'm going to have to hide a little Zoom window to make sure I see the rest of this. Uh, community partnerships. One of the things that you become a student at Duke, you also become a citizen of Durham. And so how do we think about how we engage with our local community and then external engagement? So one of the things that I get to do as part of my role is I co-chair our Ivy Plus Sustainability Consortium, which is a collection of 30 other schools. And so how do we engage with our other schools as well as how do we engage with policymakers and other researchers at other universities to really broaden our impact? So what does sustainability at Duke look like beyond those things? Um, some of the things that are important, student life. Once you come here, there's plenty of opportunities for you to get involved. You will see some of our students who help out with Zero Waste Kville. If you don't know what Kville is, it's the students camping out on the quad right in front of the gym uh, to get into basketball games. And we try to find ways to educate those folks who are tenting to make sure that we are reducing the waste coming from that event. You will also find opportunities to volunteer. Here's a group down at the bottom left of students who do tree plantings with us in the city of Durham. And lastly, we will sometimes have pop-up events across campus. And the one that's pictured in the bottom right corner is our Devil's Thrift House. So we put together a pop-up thrift store where for students by students. So it's a really great way for you to clean out your dorm a little bit and well as like fill it up with new stuff that is new to you. We also have no shortage of academic opportunities. Regardless of your major, we're hoping that every student will find their way with climate sustainability a little bit. We recognize at the end of the day, whatever career path you go into, you're going to potentially be affected by climate change. And so how do we train you to at least know enough so that you can go forth and help your company succeed in this realm? Some of these examples, one of my favorites that Duke has is Bass Connections. That is a collective of I think there's dozens and dozens of projects each year, potentially close to like 70 projects each year that are interdisciplinary. So you're not just going to, if you're an economic student like I was, you're not just going to be with econ students, you might be with public policy and engineering. And so it's a really great way to meet people from across campus and different programs, as well as different faculty and staff from across campus. We also have a certificate in sustainability engagement. So when you are a student, you can declare, well, you will have to declare a major, but you also can declare minors as well as a certificate. And so while there might be a dozen programs, there is one on sustainability engagement that our office helps lead. And it's a great way for you to try experiential learning. So you take what you're learning in the classroom and how do you actually apply it to actual like places around the world? Um, so that way you're really building out your resume. 
In the bottom left corner, if you're fortunate enough to make it out to our marine lab, there's plenty of opportunities for our students to stay there for a semester. I know I've had a number of my students in the past go out there and it's just a really great resource for them to go and engage with water life. And then the last photo in the bottom corner is a picture of Granger Hall. That is basically the centerpiece of our sustainability and climate research programs. And so in this building, that is where the Nicholas School of the Environment lives. And you will potentially find yourself in that building taking a class very soon. One of the programs that we are most excited about launching right now, we hired a new staff member in our office to help us think about how do we use the campus as a living laboratory? As I mentioned before, with academics, you're learning a lot in the classroom. So how do you take that knowledge and apply it on campus? And so some of the things when I was a student, I at Duke, I was here for grad school and I was studying forestry and I was really interested in urban forestry. So I started Duke's tree survey. And so now we have maybe 20,000 trees in a database and I'm only responsible for like 8,000 of them, but it's a really awesome thing to see, find a way to leave a legacy at Duke by using the campus as a living lab. Other things in the top right corner, that is a chilled water plant, which if that means nothing to you, that is totally okay. It's one of our utility systems that help us cool and condition our buildings. And we always try to think about the best ways to make these buildings so as sustainable as possible. So you will see solar on the rooftop of this building. It is also just making sure that campus systems are just running as efficiently as possible. In the bottom left corner, we have a Duke campus farm. And so if you're ever wanting just to get your hands dirty and try to learn about, you know, maybe you wanna grow your own food or maybe you wanna have conversations about how food systems work and how we as eaters and producers fit into those systems, it's a really great way to go out there and have fun. Every summer we bring our summer interns out every Thursday just to get out of the office and away from a computer and to build relationships with other people across campus. And lastly, but not leastly, because I love Duke Forest, uh, we have 7,000 plus acres of Duke Forest land, a lot of it really, really close to campus. And you will find all types of things, including our Lemur Center there. I already kind of touched on some of these pieces in my earlier slides, but we also have a lot of strategies and goals that guide the work that Duke University is doing. So we have a carbon neutrality commitment by 2024. That means we are trying to be net zero in our emissions, our greenhouse gas emissions by 2024, meaning a year from now. And I'm really, really excited to see this right now, Duke University of our 30 peers that I mentioned, we have the earliest and the most aggressive goal. And so I'm really excited to have all the eyes on us to a certain extent so we can potentially accelerate the efforts at our peer schools. I also mentioned the climate commitment, which interacts so with so many different pieces of Duke University, but it was a really big way for us to think about how do we apply uh, climate change and sustainability learnings as well as practices all across campus, regardless of the school that you're in or the research that you're doing. So really excited to kind of continue to see this program grow over time. One of the things that you will also see if you've already been to campus or you will come to campus soon, and this is, I always like to think about them as kind of like our moving billboards, but we have buses on campus and we've been transitioning to electric buses um, over the past few years and we'll continue to transition our bus fleet to electric buses. So if you're ever on campus, I highly recommend to ride our bus, the one that is pictured here. And lastly, and this is not the only thing, but for the sake of what fits on a slide, we also have a lot of goals related to sustainable food purchasing. And so some of the things that we are working towards over time are things like animal proteins not being treated with antibiotics, making sure that animals are being humanely raised, that they're coming from local sources whenever possible, and that the food purchase is organic and many other things. So if you're coming here in the fall, what are the things you can look forward to? So one of the things that we started last year is having an orientation program called Project Earth. And so we had 110 students, first year students with us, and that really talked about climate sustainability as well as orienting you to campus. And so if you're looking for a fun opportunity to apply your passion, as well as meet folks who are just like you, I highly encourage it. The other program that we work closely with is the Duke Campus Farm, and they have one on farm to table. And so if you're more interested in food and how to a, eat really delicious food, because Durham, North Carolina is a foodie capital of the US, but you can also find ways to grow food and meet local producers.
You can also become a sustainability ambassador. This is specifically for first year students. Each year we take 30 students in this program, uh, potentially need to grow it as our campus student population continues to grow. But we spend a year long where we tie these students to our Green Devils, who are interns throughout the year, to really have that mentoring relationship, as well as learning all things about climate sustainability. And so we have a system that is kind of like a I don't know, bi-weekly book, book club kind of thing where people will read some resources or watch some videos or uh, listen to some podcasts and then share what they learned and some insights that they have. And so it's a really great way to make community with a small cluster of folks. We also have hundreds of classes that you can take that are related to climate sustainability. Some of the ones that I think are interesting that are coming up this fall are Climate, Coffee, and Coronavirus, Why Ecology Matters to Human Health. Let's talk about climate change. This is the second year it's being taught, but this is a really great opportunity if you're looking to make relationships with faculty members at Duke. This class is taught by 14 different faculty members, at least it was this past fall. And it's a great way to meet them from many different departments, whether it is uh, political science, art history, literature, and of course, the environmental school. And lastly, Climate Change for Future Leaders, taught by Alex Glass, is a 103. So uh, ECS stands for Earth and Climate Sciences. So it's a very intro level course if you're really wanting just to get some of the basics down. You can also follow us on social media. You can check out our website. And once you sign up on our social media, we'll also eventually post a way for you to sign up for our newsletter to hear all the, the latest details of things that are happening on campus. And without further ado, I would love to take some questions. I know I ran through that quickly, but wanted to make sure that there's plenty of time for folks to ask questions. So I'm going to stop sharing and welcome anything that comes up. So let's see, chat. Um, well, great. Undergraduate admissions, feel free to pop some questions in there. And then the Q&A. Uh, from Zoe, thank you for asking. Do you have any suggested bus routes to see the most of the school? So at Duke University, we have a lot of different bus routes. One of the main ones that you will take from East Campus where you will live to West Campus is called the C1 bus. And it takes you right down Campus Drive, which is just such a stunning road um, with grown old, old oak trees that line the entire thing. It's also, if you're looking for a wonderful walk from East to West and you have 40 minutes, it's a great way to go. There's other buses across campus that will take you to different parts, but I highly encourage you just to take the initiative and go on a walk because you will stumble across things that you will not find. Durham, North Carolina, and especially at Duke, we're different than a lot of other schools where our campus buildings, there's not much like roads in between all of them. It's a pretty st strong cluster of buildings. So walking is going to probably get you most places faster. And that is the last Q&A question. So I will, oh, is there a bike share program? Thanks, Skylar, for that question. In Durham, North Carolina, we used to have bike share programs, but now that we have moved to scooters, scooters seem to be the, the new way of the day. Um, while I have never ridden on one, because I'm not entirely sure how uh, coordinated I am, but it's a really great thing. I see students constantly going up and down campus drive, like I mentioned earlier, and I think that is a great opportunity to use that. And you're also welcome to bring your bike to campus or get one at one of our local bike shops. There's a number of them that are really close to campus. How can we find Duke Forest if we're visiting campus? Uh, it is super close by, so thankfully, if you're on West Campus, um, there's a walking trail that is relatively close called the Al Bueller Trail. But some of the other things that will take you a short little drive if you're willing to do it, but there's constantly just tiny little trail systems all across Duke Forest. And one of my favorite ones is the Shepherd Nature Trail, which has educational signage to kind of talk about how our landscape has evolved over the past hundred years, as we used to be a pretty ag heavy space and just seeing now how the forest land has grown up in that space instead. But it's a really great way for you to just go on a nice little walk, um, take some friends, but thankfully we even have some faculty who will take classes out to Duke Forest or the other sites. And if your parents are coming, make them take you to the Lemur Center because it's just such an amazing thing. It's the largest population of prosimian animals outside of Madagascar, and it's here in Durham, North Carolina.
from Dylan, what kind of projects do the Green Devils work on? So one I already mentioned is that the Green Devils are become our mentors of our ambassador, our first year ambassador program. But some of the other things, once um, they have a little bit more time, we will think about all types of things that we're working on. And so some might help us with communication, some might help us with uh, waste collection, some will help us with Devil's Thrift House or Zero Waste Cable. So any of those programs that we have going on, some will just want to say, I think we need to do something about this issue. And they will do research for us to help us get that type of information. And so that's one of our favorite things. It's a pretty flexible uh, program. We have enough space for, I think, 10 Green Devil students. And we usually like it if the students can become ambassadors first to really learn about climate sustainability, but happy to always work with folks from different years. Any other questions? And at any point, you are easily welcome to just email me um, either at sustainability at duke.edu or jason.elliot with two L's and two T's um, at duke.edu. Always happy to answer some questions. And if you come to campus, particularly if you come on April 21st, we're having a lot of Earth Day festivities. And so you might be able to stumble upon those when you're walking around campus, praying for good weather, just to make sure that everybody's out and about and really excited. Um, is there a bike lane on campus? There are multiple bike lanes on campus. Uh, so you will definitely find them across campus. Some of the times you, when you're like traveling, say around Durham, some roads have them, some roads don't. When I was a grad student, I biked the entire time I was here as a, a, a cost saving mechanism and as a, a little bit of a workout, but you will eventually learn the roads that are good to bike on and the roads that are maybe a little bit dodgier, but I highly encourage that you find the opportunity to um, check out campus because it's campus as well as the surrounding area. There's some really beautiful stuff and a bike is gonna be a lot cheaper than having a car and trying to find parking across campus or off campus. Any other questions from folks? Can even be things about not sustainability. I've been here a while, probably could figure them out. If anything, uh, Bethany might be able to help out as well. Well, if there aren't any other questions, like I said, you have my contact information. You're also e easily able to find all of us and my entire team on sustainability, no, sustainable.duke.edu. No, sustainability.duke.edu. I worked on the website just now, so I should know. Oh, great, two new questions. Um, although it might not be useful to drive a car on campus, is it economical to keep a car on campus for road tripping home? That is more of a decision between I guess you and your family, and if that makes a lot of sense, one of the things that um, when I talk to students, I think they generally, when they bring cars to campus, don't use them a whole heap of a lot. Maybe if the student lives really local, that makes a lot of sense. So they can become a, that person who also takes their friends around to cool places around Durham, like the Eno State Park. But it's also, um, you park in a lot that's pretty far away. So your car isn't always the most accessible, but um, people make their own decision. Um, I survived and thrived without a car for many, many years on campus, and I highly encourage you to at least try it for a semester without, unless you really think you have to go home a lot. But that's always, a, I think, a very individual type of thing, but always happy to strategize if helpful. And how many students have cars on campus? Oh, I wish I actually knew. We have a parking lot full of cars. A lot of them are probably more grad students who are living off campus or students who live off campus. Um, I have one student who's uh, getting ready to graduate, um, but he has a car on campus, but I don't think he uses that much. Okay. If I'll wait for like 30 more seconds. I'm happy to stay on um, as folks want, if they have any other very specific questions, but thank you so much for your time. And I'm so excited to welcome you to the uh, campus in the fall. Definitely look us up, 
happy to, to get you in the know of everything that's happening on campus. You're welcome, Skylar. All right, thanks everyone. We're hoping to see you on campus for Blue Double Days, um, April 20th, 21st, 24th, or 25th. And thank you for attending the session this evening. We are um, ex so excited to welcome you. And again, congratulations to our admitted students out there. Thank you.